getting it all out so everybody can hear us. And I have to say huge thank you to AJ. If you guys have not met AJ Rock, you will meet AJ Rock. Because he's the one that said, you're going to have Zambia and I this year, aren't you? And I'm like, <laughs> so much work. And I'm here tonight to apologize for my feelings. And I'm going to share with you very personal feelings that I have because doing this next year will be 25 years. And I have to admit that I just have these times when I'm like, are we really doing any good? Are we really like, we work so hard and is our lives over there any better? We need a right. But then, no, I have three wonderful stories, and you guys are all in the stories. So if you didn't, kind of in the, if I have your email, I sent you this really cute program. And I just loved it because it made, oh, Cam has one to share. You can go see his after. But um, if you noticed at the top, I said, where we make dreams come true. And then I titled, if you look on the back, here's our little program. Well, it's so much more than scholarships now. This is just, and I'm going to try not to get emotional because, you know, in the beginning, I was just going to send a couple kids to school. That's all I was going to do. And anyway, I'm going to get to my three stories. My first story, since you don't have your program, and I don't know if we can see it at home, but there's this really cute little school, and there was a um, middle school in Idaho, and they said, we want to do a fundraiser, and I don't know how much money we can raise because we're just a little small school, we're just a charter school, but we're going to try. And um, so Tobias, this is our employee in Zambia. And I'm telling you, we cannot live without Tobias. So Tobias, if you're out there listening, so a thank you. We just he So he made this cute little sign and it said, anyway, Sand Creek Middle School, help our dreams come true. And it's just a really, you know, normal bush school in Zambia. And just about a week ago, he took a picture and sent it to me of the new school that was built. And right in the middle of the program, and you're going to see him in Linda's, um, her slide presentation of beautiful schools that we've built. But what this, um, what I'm getting at is that when, AJ said, let's have a Zambia night. Well, I had to kind of look and see what we had done this year. And when I started looking, I was like, oh my goodness, we built 22 schools. We've like, and you guys don't get to see, but um, this was the statistics. It was like, oh, well, we have almost 400 high school students in high school. We have just about 200 teachers in teachers colleges and nursing colleges and and trade schools and anyway it got to be really emotional when i started to see and i started to think about all of you because i am not um i'm not a wealthy person and when everybody says to me, oh, but I couldn't have done it without you, I always think of you guys because I couldn't have done any of this without you. And some of our major donors are here tonight, and I couldn't build a school. I don't have enough money to build a school. But when these people come forward and say, I want to build a school, I say, you know, it's gone up to $30,000 now. That's okay, I want to build a school. So that's first of all, is the building of schools got 
got me really touched. And then I wasn't really sold on this building of schools. And my girlfriend who lives in, um, you live in Cedar Hills, Doug. She lives in Pleasant Grove, but they're like neighbors. And we didn't know this. And Doug had brought home the teacher's letters to their sponsors. And I needed to pick them up from Doug. But my girlfriend had a couch that she said, I'll give you and if you'll come down and get it. Um, and it was this really beautiful floral. And I love floral. And she knew I did. And it would look really nice in my screen porch. So I went down to get the couch. And I said, well, maybe we could swing by Doug's house. Do you know where Cedar Hills is? And she said, that's practically my backyard. So we didn't even call Doug first. And I just knocked on his door. And he was home. And I said, Doug, do you have the letters for our um, teachers? And he goes, yes, come in. He had just got back from Zambia. I can't tell you, but for one hour, maybe hour and a half, it was long. He started to tell me how important and how much his trip I'm just saying that it was a battery charger that I needed because he was just so thrilled about everything that was happening over there. So he was my second battery charger. And third, you guys all saw that cute picture of Natasha Cup. Sorry for the Zambians, I'm going to really um, slaughter this name, but it's Natasha Kapusha. I sent out a little newsletter, Tina sent out the newsletter, and it said, well, because two of our employees in Zambia are Tobias and Joseph. And um, Joseph wrote me an email that said, I know that our budget is finished. And I always tell him, we can't go over budget, guys. We can't. I know there's going to be a million students and, and mothers and cousins and everyone approaching you and saying, can you, can you send my, your Zambia scholarship fund, can you send my child to school, can you send my niece to school, even if they're ready to school, go to school, they come and they, they bombard Tobias at our office, and this cute girl, Natasha, she came into the office, and apparently she had had a guardian that would pay for two years of her nursing, School. and then her guardian passed away and she couldn't finish her third year of nursing school and she told Joseph if I can't finish I've decided I'm going to take my life that's how big of a deal it was to her and so Joseph wrote to me and said can you find a sponsor I know our budget is finished we need to help Natasha so I, we sent out the little newsletter guys I can't even tell you how many people responded she only needed like eight hundred dollars for something to finish school and maybe a little money for clothes a little money for food and those kinds of things so if you didn't see our last newsletter I had her write a little letter and I won't read it all, but it just says, hello, everyone. My name is Nat Natasha Kapusha. I am so excited that my story has been picked to be shared among the partners and sponsors of the Zambia Scholarship Fund at Zambia Night. I am a 23-year-old girl who comes from a small village called Kateshi. I did my primary school at Kafwani Mission School. Anyway, she goes on to say how she barely made it. Her mother was helping her with uh, selling tomatoes and chickens to help her get to elementary school and to high school, through high school. And then this guardian that passed away. And anyway, her thanks is huge to all of you. But my thanks, well, I had so many people say, I will help Natasha. I was like, Wow, it just made me realize that people really are reading our newsletters. And Tina, you should be glad because people really are reading our newsletters.
And people really wanted to help her. And that's the kind of program we run here. It's like we're just all small potatoes. <laughs> we're not any of us uh, what we would consider the big guys. But with all these small potatoes, we have been able to do humongous amount of work. And my last, which I was going to challenge you guys tonight, but because I lost, left my key, you're off the hook for tonight. But I was going to have you pick up some books. I was going to have you send them. Car open. Oh, you got my car open? Well, we might still do it. We'll get to the challenge. This is this, <laughs> this is the challenge. Okay, I can't get home tonight, but my car is open, so you guys get off. You're not off the hook. But we're still going to do the challenge. Okay, last of all, the challenge. I just have to read. I was going to read a couple letters because of time we won't, but this is a really fun thing that you can all do. And um, I remember my very first experience of just bringing a little stack of books into a library and this man came up to me and he said, why don't you start approaching philanthropists? And I said, what? I didn't even know what that word meant. I had never heard that word. He goes, you know, philanthropists. There's a man who's put together philanthropists of Utah in a book. And you can write to them, you can ask them to help you with your charity. I just started the charity. Well, since then, it has grown to, these are called giving foundations, okay? And you just have to write a letter. And I like to send a book, because it's pretty easy for them to drop the letter in a garbage can. Because, you know, probably there's a lot of charities asking them. But I like to send a book, and what they will require is two letters of recommendation. So when I got this letter of recommendation from Arlene Braithwaite, this sums up what we do, guys. So I'm going to read this. And if you want to take the challenge, there will be a sign-up sheet at the back. You just take 10 books, and you go mail them to a giving foundation with your story, with a couple of these letters, and see if you get them to send you a 1000 bucks, maybe 3000 If it's really good, maybe 10 OK, here's a wonderful letter I got from Arlene. My name is Arlene Braithwaite, and it is a pleasure to write this letter of support for the Zambia Scholarship Fund. I started donating to Zambia Scholarship Fund 10 years ago after a trip to Zambia. This is the hard part for me. I went to see the wildlife, which was remarkable, but it was the people that stayed with me. Upon my return home, they were open bright and positive, despite the lack of all but the most basic physical possessions. Their most important goal was to educate their young people. Upon my return to the United States, I wanted to do something to help. And I was fortunate to meet Peggy Rogers and learn about the ZSF, which Peggy created over 20 years ago. Peggy, too, had traveled to Zambia and became committed and devoted her time and energy to support education for the Zambian youth. She started with providing scholarships for a few students. CSF has now grown into an organization that has given over 10 million cash and in-kind donations for schools, teachers, and scholarships for students to receive an education through college, trade schools, and to prepare them for a productive career. All fundraising efforts for ZSF are paid for by the board members of ZSF. The only paid staff in Zambia are teachers and several administrators. Once a year, a supervised visit is made to the Zambia ZSF schools. Even these trips, I might add, are paid by the volunteers themselves. I have a group of supporters in Cedar City who held a fundraiser, and we earned 9,000 
last year. It went directly to ZSF. Over the years, I have funded the building of schoolrooms, furniture, digging of wells, the things that she has put her money into. They are so determined to continue their education, and we feel like we are honestly helping to make a difference, especially if they are able to attend college or trade school. I know of no other organization that gives so much bang for the dollar as Zambia Scholarship Fund, and that is so deserving of financial support. In closing, I offer it my highest recommendation. So this is what I'm talking about the passion of all of us and all of you and anyone who's ever been, who or even people who haven't been. You don't have to go to Zambia to be so touched by helping these people. And I think Doug is after me. Thank you. I have a loud enough voice that I won't say. They won't hear you at home, though. Oh. Yeah. That one is for the one at home. Okay. Uh, I'm Doug. I'm Caden. Uh, we were in Zambia uh, in July. Uh, this was my third trip, Caden's first. How many of you have been on a trip to Zambia? About half. Um, I first went in 2010 um, with Peggy. I was on the board of directors then. I was able to go back in 2014. I was scheduled to go back in 2020, but COVID ruined that. Caden and I were scheduled to go in 2021. The Delta variant ruined that. But I finally made it back this year, and we had uh, a great time. Um, for those who haven't been, or if you haven't been for a while, I'm just going to start with a quick impression about good news. Uh, there is good news in Zambia. Uh, when we went this year, we landed in the capital of Saka at a beautiful new modern airport. So much better than the old one. Uh, more flights are going into the country now for more places because of the new airport. But even more importantly, in education, uh, elections were held in 2021. One of the candidates made pro a promise to make uh, school free through high school. For many years, we've been funding high school students because of the tuition and also promised to hire 30,000 new teachers. In 2022, uh, Zambia made high school free through 12th grade. There is no tuition anymore. And hired 30,000 new teachers, about 3,000 of which were in the northern province where we were. There's still a lot to do, and we'll talk about that, but it's in the, in the time time since I've been there, it is really nice to see the progress. One of the places is my favorite village. Um, go ahead and hit the video. This is Mansha East Village. Um, every time I go to a school or a village, the, the, the students often put on a, a show for us that's really great. They taught Caden how to drum. <laughs> but when I first went to Mansha East in 2010, it was a two-room school, uh, an Adobe sort of school. The Blackboards. Um, uh, one of our board members helped get blackboards, and, and a few years later, the government did get desks. But then, uh, four years ago, uh, the walls collapsed, and they had no school. 
They only had one teacher, by the way, for 150, 175 students. This is the new Mancha East School with three beautiful classrooms and five teachers. Uh, because of the extra teachers they hired. Uh, we built that school, ZSF built the school, but the government promised us that if we built it, they would send additional teachers. I was hoping for two or three more. They sent four, so we now have five teachers uh, for those 175 students. Um, you want to just mention the well? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so while we were there, um, every school that we went to made sure to kind of tell us about some of their needs. And in Mancha East specifically, it was during the dry season, they don't have access to clean water. Um, they don't have access to water actually at all. Yeah. <laughs> so they end up walking five miles to go and retrieve the water. Sometimes they're sending students, sometimes they're sending parents um, to do that. And so they're not able to work their fields they're not able to um, kids miss school yeah kids miss school and so they have some technology now that they can do solar powered wells and originally they quoted us somewhere around eighteen hundred dollars to get that done and so i started a fundraiser when i got back and uh, the bids just came in a little bit higher than that i think around three three thousand now so that's something we're working towards Caden has done all of the work on, on raising the funds for that himself. It's a very, it's a very remote village. Uh, so, you know, to get the equipment out there. The first time I went to it in 2010, one of my sons was with me and, you know, we went down the halfway decent paved road, then the not so good paved road, then the graded gravel road, then the dirt road and then the two track and my son asked our driver are you sure we're still in africa that's kind of how remote that is go ahead to the next one um this is um kind of fun the guy in the hat is me the man to the right of me is the permanent secretary of the northern province of zambia uh, that's the equivalent of the governor. The northern province is a, is a large province. Uh, for those of you who have been, you know this probably, those of you who haven't, Zambia Scholarship Fund is a pretty big deal in the northern province. They know who we are. I met the permanent secretary when I first went in 2010 with Peggy. It's a, it's a new one, a different one now. But they know who we are and they're very appreciative. So this is two additional classrooms at a school that Zambia Scholarship Fund paid for. Uh, the governor, the district commissioner, uh, and a whole bunch of other dignitaries, the governor's security detail, were all there. And the governor and I cut the ribbon to open that school. And um, a lot of older people understand English, but some of the younger students don't and others. I didn't have an interpreter there. Uh, I gave a little speech in English. Uh, the governor, the permanent secretary, spoke after me and pretty much repeated for everyone uh, what I had said and then challenged them that, you know, with the gratitude they had for that school, that they would care for it. Um, it, it was really nice, and the permanent secretary is very supportive of what we do. You did say Mulishani. Mulishani. It's like, hello. AJ <laughs> Nash. Okay, Caden is going to tell you the name of the person standing on the right. That's uh, Chitalu Mush Mushimwe. At Chawana School. He is a ZSF teacher. Does anyone here happen to be a sponsor of Chitali at Chitalu at Chihuahua School? If you if you are, or if whoever that is is tuned in, will you look? He is the best dressed teacher in Zambia. <laughs> um, 
On the left is the, the principal, the head teacher. Uh, on the other side of me is the headman of the village in Zambia. They still have kind of that chief headman, uh, incredible headman. And this uh, new school, um, uh, Zambia Scholarship Fund built, and again, they're, they're just very grateful. Next one. Um, in 2022, Chafa was opened. Um, so Chafa Village is several miles from where do you see this sign. <laughs> the sign is on the is on the highway, so to speak. Um, there was no high school in this village. The students had to walk miles and miles and miles across a river <laughs> with no bridge across a stream with no bridge if they wanted to go to high school and so a lot of students didn't go to high school um, Zambia Scholarship Fund built four classrooms and a, a charity in Great Britain built four classrooms and so Chafwa now has a beautiful eight classroom school incredible teachers, great head, head teacher, uh, and they're really focused on preparing students for college. And um, we got to visit most of the classrooms and um, um, and the students were hitting me with, with science questions that I couldn't answer. Um, <laughs> but their students are very motivated as they are everywhere you go in Zambia but they have 50 or 60 students per classroom because the school is there now almost every student in the village is able to go so they have no room for science uh, practical because every everything is is just book work and uh, they really were hoping they could get a science classroom and a computer technology classroom and we are funding uh, construction should start uh, within the next month or two, two more classrooms uh, here at, at uh, Chafwa, one that will be computer tech and one that will be science. And that really helps the students if they do want to go into college and into careers where there's a much better chance for them to get a job. And so we're excited. And this, I think, is going to be the model school these bush villages, the model secondary school with those two additional classrooms, what they'll be able to do there. Next one. Yeah, so, so I'll take over for this one. So um, while in Kasama, we were able to stop by the Kasama uh, Girls School. And this is a, a very nice boarding school that they that they have. Um, and last time Doug was there, so they, their max capacity is about 800. Um, now they're up to 1,500 students with that with the same amount of boarding accommodations. And so this is a video I took of what the dorms look like. Where you go. So it might be kind of hard to see, but there's, you know, two girls to a bed and their suitcases are stacked on top of one another on, on top of walls, wherever they can fit them. The bathrooms are even worse. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's still need. It, and, and it's because of, of uh, secondary schools becoming free that the enrollment has gone from 800 to 1500, but no change in the dorms. And so it's two per bed. I think there's just one more picture, I think. No, that's it. Um, if any of you are interested in, in details, I have handouts. You're welcome to see me after, and it has my email if you have questions. So if you're a detailed kind of person, there's, there's more information here. But great progress in Zambia and a lot still to do. Thank you.
Hi, good evening. My name is Linda Call. I am on the building committee, um, and I, I'm so grateful that Doug was able to go. Doug and Caden were able to go to Zambia because it's great when we have people actually on the ground over there seeing what's going on. And I'm just going to go through my slides really quickly because I think what you saw from Doug pretty much shows, you know, most of what we were doing. You can go ahead, AJ. Uh, so Peggy was talking about how many schools we built. The 21 is actually over the time period that we've been building schools, which I think is four or five years. Is that right? So th those weren't all this year, but the ones I have listed up here were all at least partially built this year. So they may have been started last year or they may be finished next year, but um, I think we've got nine up there. So still really good progress this year. And then um, we built 700 desks this year. So uh, I think that's such a great thing. We were able to get uh, money from the Sorensen Fa Legacy Foundation for 400 desks. So, and we'll see a picture of the kids sitting on the floor and I don't know how you learn that way. Okay. Uh, so these are before pictures. We can just go through quickly what a schoolhouse might have been before. This one is Chibo, and my husband and I went there last year, and we'll get to see what their new building is like. But they were in the morning uh, here, and then in the afternoon when the sun shone on them, they'd have to go underneath the tree. So that's what they were dealing with. And, and you can see this school doesn't even look safe. You can go ahead. That's what... The kids sitting on the floor. So that is the picture that I sent to the Sorensen Family Foundation. And that's when they said, okay, yes, we'll build desks because these poor kids, I don't know how they learned to write sitting cramped like that on the floor. Okay. Uh, okay, so during, I just wanted to bring up that the, the communities play a huge role in the building of the schools. So they provide the bricks and every family in the community, whether they have kids or not, is required to produce so many bricks. And if they aren't cooperating with us, we'll, we had to last year say to one community, sorry, we're not gonna build with you this year. You know, you can try with us again, but they, they weren't pulling together and getting the bricks made, so we went to a different village. So the, you'll just, when, when we went there, the, the whole village will come out and they're so excited about the school and they're all helping make the bricks. So it's a really cool experience. That's just another during picture, the construction, and here I love that picture of all the kids in the partially built school. And then this is at the ceremony where they are handing over, because we always hand this, the schools over to the government. We don't have ownership of the schools. We just provide the materials, and then the schools are, you know, they're the Zambian school. So this is the handover ceremony. This is the picture that... Uh, Peggy was talking about they actually got the name of the school wrong, but it's really cute. So it's actually Sand Creek School that helped them, and they had Sand Hill, but great picture. And here's the desk. So another thing about these desks is that, you know, we are providing employment to people in Zambia because they are building these desks so that, you know, it's not just the kids getting the desks, it's also boosting the economy as people have jobs making the desks. How much does one desk cost? A desk? Yeah. I didn't hear. Oh, about, about $50. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can go ahead. And I'm not going to play this, but this cute little girl uh, gave a speech at, about the desks. And it's really cute. She's a little bit hard to understand, though. So we can just probably skip this one. Because of time, there's another celebration. You can see how excited the the people of the village are when they are uh, opening the school. And this is so. This is the video that Caden took, and I love it. And I stole it from them. They were going to play it in their presentation, but we're going to play it in mine now because I think it's such a great video. This is the old Chibo schoolhouse, and as you can see, the roof and the wall have collapsed in. This is what a regular school day would look like in Chibo. While we were there visiting, we were able to open the new school. And so here's that ribbon cutting ceremony. 
And here is what the inside of the school looks like. because my husband and I, when we went to Zambia this last year- This is the year, old Chibo schoolhouse. Uh, Chibo was requesting a school building, so we hadn't even started yet, and now here it is completed, so it was really fun to see that happen. And I just wanna thank all the donors. I think it's amazing. I, when there's a school building, it's a magnet for the kids to come to school. Every, when we talked to the teachers, they said, yeah, it's great, we have a school building, but now we're overcrowded because the kids come when there's a, a quote, real school. So thanks to everyone who's made that possible. And I do like looking at you guys, but I'm just driving and showing you a couple of things on the website, but I do want to say thank you. And I do want to introduce a couple of people and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk about one in a second. Um, can you stand up, Ms. Thorpe? Uh, Ms. Thorpe's the librarian for my kids' school at Valley View, and uh, she volunteered to help us pilot the school to school program. So, um, <laughs> was that the same Valley View and Bountiful? <laughs> so, anyways, I know everyone's itching and Peggy's itching to uh, read letters, so I'm going to go quick and show you guys um, some things. And then, Stanley, can you stand up too? I play soccer with some guys at work, and Stanley's the man because. I saw him wearing a Zambia jersey and I'm playing soccer and I'm like, where are you from? And he's like, Zambia. And so he actually went to Mungui Boys where we support kids. Totally. Oh, he's out here and he's got some Zambian friends in town and so I'll get to know them because it's awesome. Okay. Um, so real quick, what we'll do is just show you a couple things on the website, um, just so you know what's available for you. Let's see if I, so, oh, first thing, uh, social media challenge. We have a donor that's going to donate every single time somebody joins. So if you go to the bottom of the website, we have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and also our newsletter. So if you just follow us, it actually makes a big difference. So please do take a second to do that. And, um, and for everybody that joins each one of these, it's another dollar donation. So, um, so, uh, I want to show you this page with all the teachers because Peggy likes it. And Evans, um, big thanks to Evans, who's one of our teachers over there. He's been helping a ton with all types of stuff. And he helped put all these pictures on for all 47 of our teachers and all the schools. And then we have first name and last initial of the sponsors. So there's that good looking, uh, I think that was who he mentioned. Um, so you can go find your teacher and see their name. The other thing on here, if you don't sponsor a teacher, then you can go ahead and you can find your um, student. So here's our over 400 different students and um, sponsors privacy. We're not putting your full last names, just first names, last initial. If that's an issue with anyone, just let me know. Um, and you can see how many people need sponsors. These come out general funds, but we have a ton of students that you know, you never know if they're going to be sponsored again. It just depends on the flow of general funds. Um, the And then you can find those students and to, Tobias and Kelvin and, and, and our staff over there have been doing a great job just throwing in every single picture of every single one of these hundreds of, of secondary students. Now, when they said we don't, uh, the, the government pays for secondary school, um, there's still books and needs, and these are the most needy of the needy in rural areas at the Bush schools. And so we still are supporting these Bush school students with the uniforms and the requirements they have. Um, so that's still part of the fund, even though um, public school is supposedly free now. Sorry, they don't can have you say that tuition. again? I'm sorry. So, um, so what we're doing now, and Peggy or other people can correct me, is we're supporting the people at the Bush schools and the secondary schools with, with shoes and, and um, uniforms and books, the required stuff. The fees have gone kind of down and so we can support more kids um, because they don't have a tuition for those. We still support at the secondary schools. We still have those private schools, Kasama Girls, 
Malawi boys, and then of course, you know, our our um, our colleges and stuff. But the mass like big tuition requirement that we used to have is not there anymore. Um, so now we're covering more students to enable them to go to school. Because to be honest, the kids don't go to school if they don't have a uniform. It's kind of UK style there and stuff. So you have to buy them. Well, it depends where you are. Some places in the bush they don't even have you know yeah. anything. Can okay, I, we gotta go. Can Close I take up. one? Second yeah, on go that. ahead. Yeah, please do. It, it, it is very confusing. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, you guys can hear me, but I want people at home to hear. So I asked Tobias about that because we've been sponsoring high school kids because high school wasn't free. So just this year, they say high school is free. Okay. Well, it isn't free if you don't have shoes, if you don't have a uniform, if you don't have, can't pay for the books, if you can't pay the school fee of you can go, but then there's examination fees. So I asked Tobias, should we stop supporting high school students since now high school is free? And he said, no, absolutely not. The money will still go to help them buy the materials they need or they won't be able to go. So if you're supporting a high school student, continue to do so because we need you to. Thank you, AJ. Yeah. Um, so I'll go ahead and close up so we can get to the letters. Um, the only other things I had on here, I was gonna show you um, building projects. Uh, so you can come see all the projects and then help build a school page. Uh, this is a really good way to see all the past projects, completed projects. You can just come in here and then click on each one and see details about and statistics. And AJ, yep. Is ZSF, ZSF going to continue to build schools? Is that our future to just keep building? I'd have to ask the director. <laughs> I think it's up to the donors, the board, and, and you guys. So. Um, and are the, we going to stay within Kasama or are we expanding elsewhere? So, so yeah, so basically Northern Province is kind of where we can, Mungui and Kasama District. Um, but good questions. The next thing I want to grab was the school to school lorry over there. Um, so I, I think this is huge. I have kids and I want my kids to have gratitude for the education that they have and the opportunities they have and um and it's really cool to see them pair up with students um you know over there in zambia and so we're partnering u.s schools with zambian schools and technology is such now i can pay you know ten dollars a month to cover their network fees for their phone and then they're able to send us messages and videos and connect with the students between the classes. And I think that's something very meaningful um, for you know, us as a community as a whole um, to help our kids realize those things. And so I really hope to get this into more schools. So if you have any, any interest or, or do a homeschool or, or have kids in school, come talk to me because uh, I'll get you involved. Um, and I think that's all I have. Let's go back to the slides and I think Peggy's gonna ask people to read letters. So we have a map with everybody, but let's read letters. Oh, Barbara's gonna share some pictures. I'm gonna pull them up for you, Barbara. Hi, I'm over the micro grants. We used to call them micro funds, but that involves way too much paperwork and hoops to jump through. So we do micro grants and that basically is anywhere from like $250 to a bit more to set someone up in a business. The real, one of the real problems in Zambia is the fact that there's 95% unemployment. So even if these kids go through school, there isn't a job there for them. Somehow we have to teach them free enterprise. And so that's what we're trying to do through the micro grant program. And the truth of the matter is we can do it for such a small amount that it's just incredible. And so they have they have things like we got my slides. Yeah, yeah they're coming. Okay, when when it gets you tell me when they're back there. <laughs> um, so they do just things like raising chickens and they have a, a restaurant, very, very loose term. Um, they do hair where they braid their hair. Their hair doesn't grow very well. And so they, they have a, 
beauty salon where they add extensions and and uh, that's a source of income for some women your doctor okay um, this is a little stand she has a little stand on the side of the road where she sells beans and caterpillars and you know just whatever they eat and so it just takes such a little teeny bit of money to set them up in a business and we're working on support so that they don't because they're they're going in blind it's like giving your five-year-old a business to run and um and, and we're just doing the best we can and and so some of it doesn't doesn't succeed but we're trying to teach them by doing it with them and i've got uh ivy over there who was a retired school principal who is fabulous. She and I went out and visited so many of the, the recipients and it was incredible to help her to understand that we're not here judging, we're here to see how it went, what can we do to help it go better next time. And so, um, so let's go, to, so that's a stand. These two were sisters. The one knew how to do chickens, the other one did not. The one that knew how ended up having to go to another village and so some of the chickens died but but they're working together to make a life better for them and they're the ones who depend on them this is another woman that raised chickens she was an elderly woman but she had so many children there that were depending upon her and she was raising chickens and doing a great job. She knew what she was doing. One more. This was this is the restaurant, folks. So see that little table behind me. Um, that's that's her restaurant. I think the next slide hopefully is another. So this is her little cooking table. She cooks outside, but she's got this little kind of like a card table with her pots and pans and things. And so she has a little business there by a road where people come in, men that don't have a somebody there to cook for them. And so this is where they eat. So this is what we're trying to do is teach entrepreneurship and help them understand how to start a business because there aren't, there aren't jobs available. They can't all be school teachers. We've got to have some of them learn how to do some of the other things that are necessary to run a business. Okay, love you. Barbara, we have a few minutes. Oh, sorry. Excuse me, real quick, it's been a while since I've been. Yeah. How much is a micro grant monthly amount? We asked. Like 25, well, 25, $250 a year, I okay. mean, a, a time. Okay. So I don't know, you can, you can donate whatever you want. That's what high school student amount, college student amount, teacher amount. Monthly. So I don't know what they are in current. Let, 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 me, let me kind of explain what we do, okay? Uh, you know, it really depends on how much money we raise. And one year we got a great grant, and we had, you know, I don't know, Yulia, we had like 10 or 20,000 one year. It was great. For the micro grants. For the micro grants. And all it is is we call it a micro grant because we don't expect them to pay it back. It's not a micro loan. And it's based on what they, they'll fill out an application and they will send us their applications and we'll have hundreds of applications. Some might be asking for pots and pans. Some might be asking for a sewing machine. Some might be asking for a bicycle because they want to deliver things. Some want to cook fritters. So we take the money. If you would like to donate $100 or buy a sewing machine, but it's not a certain amount because what if pots and pans cost us 20 bucks? You know what I mean? So we're able to help. Last year we put about 8,000 in, right, Barb? Because you, well, you know, you, you donated yeah. quite a bit yourself too. So I'm just saying that we were able to help probably 40 people. You know, it really depends because some of the things they want to do are, are costly. Some of them want three of them to go in together on you know a small restaurant like she's talking about or something we just look and see how far our money can go 
So we'll really take any donation. I mean, we'd love $200 towards this. If it's your passion, I want to say this about what the beautiful thing is. Every time you go over, someone's got a better idea of how to help because they need all kinds of help. And so everybody goes, ah, let's buy mattresses. They're, they're sitting there sleeping on the floor. Let's, um, which brings me, okay, to a very important thing I need to say here tonight. Bless his heart, Jim Bowd saw the need to make an orphanage, okay? Now, we're all volunteers, and my wonderful accountant is here tonight. <laughs> Do you know how much work it is if you're a volunteer to keep track of over in Zambia when you when you say, okay, we're going to spend 500000 for our budget? That could be... 80, you know, um, this and that, and, or 40 micro grants, and it can be, we just we just look at how much money we raise for that year and decide how much, where, where it can all go. And in fact, we don't make the choice. We have a wonderful board of directors in Zambia. They're Zambians. And we could go into how wonderful they are. But what they say, they send us a letter of request. This is what we would like to see you would spend your money on this year. We figure since they're Zambians, they know better than we do how to spend money. We don't really know. We're, our heart just goes like, oh, we got to do that. Oh, we got to do that. And poor like somebody like Sandy, every time she goes over, I say, Sandy, you can't go over anymore. Because every single person comes to her, my, my son is blind and, and mad at me. Okay, I'll help him. Oh, but my nephew, you know, and it's true. They're not making up these stories. They are true. So your heart goes out. And I just um, wanted to say, now, we really couldn't keep, I couldn't keep what I'm doing and also the orphanage. The orphanage is too big. It's um, a whole category of its own. So I want to just say officially tonight, Jim has asked me, and we have all agreed, he's going to run the orphanage himself. He doesn't want any donations because he feels like he and his family can run it. And we are thrilled. He may get a 501c3. He may not. But he is just saying, don't worry about it. I'm taking the orphanage and going with it. And we say, bless you, Jim, because our plate is full. We can pick it up and it. Okay, so we're not going to worry about that. It's not going to be a part of us. You're not going to see it on the website. We're not going to ask you. In fact, he says some people have even asked to donate, and he says, no, I'm not accepting donations for that because he wants to run it. His family wants to run it, so bless their heart. Okay, do we have time for maybe two letters? Yeah. Sorry, guys. Two, three? Okay, two. Thank you, Audrey. It's kind of been our tradition, if you haven't been here, uh, we like to read a letter from the students because every year they write to their sponsors and they say a little bit about themselves and how much they appreciate us and it's real touching. So we're going to do a couple letters. Thank you. Yeah. All right, this is a college, so a teacher, um, teacher's college student. Her name is Memory Bemboa, or Bemboa. It, but there's her picture. She's just adorable. Greetings to you and your family. I always, this is what gets me. Listen to this first part because they always pray for us. They're always, always praying for us. Okay. I always pray to God to protect you and your family for the help that you have been rendering to me through sponsoring me in my studies. I am writing this letter to convey my honest, genuine gratitude and appreciation to you for sponsoring my studies. Your scholarship is priceless and will definitely help me in not only education endeavors, but also in the future to sustain my life. I guarantee you that I will make use of this opportunity to study really hard and to win a successful job. Your kind favor also motivates me to help others in need, and I will definitely do so in the future. May the Almighty God bless you always. 
I am a firstborn girl child in the family of seven. My parents are quite poor, such that they failed to manage paying for my school fees since grade eight. As a result, I was being chased out of school for not paying the school fees. For this reason, I had to quit school and I stayed home for more than three years. Luck enough, my cousin and her husband called me from Kayamba Mission, Kayambi Mission, where I was staying with my parents in 2013. After staying with them for a while, they saw that they can take me back to school because I was intelligent and I used to help their children with their schoolwork. They took me back to school at Kasama's Girls Secondary School in grade eight and in grade nine. I wrote my examinations where I got 415 marks. I wish I knew what that meant, but I think it sounds good. Um, I went to Ituna Secondary School. That is where I did my grade 12. Unfortunately, these people who were sponsoring me had challenges in terms of finances, and they told me that they were what they were going through. Other well-wishers helped me until I came to my uncle, who retired a long time ago with my auntie, and they started looking for help until they explained the problem to a very kind man, Mr. Mangani. May the good Lord bless you, sir. That is how I came to be connected. Now, I am in my final year. I'm pleading this year, December 2023. My humble appeal to you is that uh, may you continue working with the same spirit you have by helping those people in need. I have my younger sisters and brothers who are still at school. One of my sisters is completing this year grade 12 at Kiyombi Nishin Secondary School. I am looking forward to see her progress and my other sisters and brothers. Yours sincerely, Memory Rimba. Their hearts are so pure and they know that education is so valuable and they just can't do it without us. So, I love them. Thanks. In that letter, when she said that she met a kind man, Mr. Mangani, it's uh, it's our man, Tobias Manjani. He's our guy. So anyway, um, there's so many good letters. So I just kind of picked one. And this is from the Kasama College of Education. But I also had a bunch that were really nice. And check out this girl, Lucy uh, Kangwa in her nice little nursing outfit with her nursing hat on. And she's going to the Lukupa College of Nursing and we're supporting her and some other nursing students. And so, you know, we've, we've started out and, and uh, in small ways and we've just kind of spread out to different kinds of schools and we have a trade school that we support and so on. Anyway, this is uh, Dear Steve and Jackie Johnson. The first of all, I just wanted to pass my regards to, oh, this is a Hope, Hope Wallian, and there's her picture right there. First of all, I just wanted to pass my regards to you, all my sponsors and the family. May the good Lord continue to bless you in your entire lifetime and give you good health so that at the end of my program in education, I can finish my studies. I also wanted to appreciate for your good heart and sacrifice to my education and life, because without you, I am nothing in this world. From the time you started sponsoring for my education last year, when I was in first, my life has been changed. And my mother, we always pray for you all and the family of you all, and we always appreciate. Before I came to this institution, my life was very bad because me and my mother, we were living the life that I cannot even explain in terms of financial support that I had no hope for me to continue my studies. To, oh, oh, to tertiary level, because during my second secondary education, my uncle was the one who was paying for me and he died when I was in grade 11. From that time, my school was disturbed. That way, my mother started selling groundnuts. Those groundnuts are peanuts. 
in the streets so that I could continue and finish school. After finishing my secondary school, my life became so difficult that I even lost hope for me to proceed to tertiary level until I met one of Zambia Scholarship Fund who connected me and have this important opportunity of having a scholarship. So she met, she met somebody associated with the Zambia Scholarship Fund. Our institution is located in Kasama, near the town of Kasama, and is six kilometers away from town. I'd always promise you to continue working hard and praying to my God to give me and encourage me to study so I can understand the things that I am studying. I just want to thank the Almighty God to bring you in my life and for me to reach in second year and to pass the promotion examinations for me. I will always continue working hard until I finish this program next year. The last but not the least, I just want to thank you and pray to the Lord to continue blessing you and your family because you are the one who has changed my life family and our society. My family and entire community will be benefit, even the country because of you. May the Almighty be with you and protect you in your entire life. And Haley is going to read a quick letter. And I think it's really great because Sandy Jensen, raise your hand. This is to you. Oh, he's tall. <laughs> Dear Sandra Jensen, I wish that by this lovely moment you are in good shape and all is going on well. I wish you Jehovah's blessings in abundance. I write to you, my dear lovely sponsor, to appreciate for your help. Truly, I'm helpless without your hand. It has been a privilege to have you as one of my pillars of education. Truly, you are the saint. I had prayers years ago of having someone to help my mother so as to support my education. God has used you to, and I have confirmed my prayer answered. Seeing you and shake your right hand of mercy is the least I can think of. Yet I'm capable of writing to you like this, and I hope that my greeting and appreciation will find you in very much stable shape. I may like to complete school and find myself with a blessing of doing the same. Surely I vow that I will never forget what you are just doing to support me. And for that reason, I will help somebody who will need my hand in the future. Best wishes, handsome Chola. Well, everybody, oops. And I just failed to mention that I didn't notice that Steve and Jacqueline Johnson are right there. I just read their letter, so raise your hand. Okay, very good. And also, I want to say how much, how grateful I am. I'm Peggy's husband, Scott. I just want to tell each of you here and at home and in Zambia how much I appreciate the support that you give to Peggy because I live with her every day, and I know that for the last 23, 24 years now, she has had some real trying times. She has her ups and downs. Sometimes she gets so discouraged. And then God sends people into her life that help in so many ways. And she just keeps going forward. And I just have to say, Peggy, you're great. We love you. God sent all of you. God sent all of you. Sam, do we allow one more letter? Because I was going to keep everybody just an hour and a half. I'm not going to read a letter. Um, I'm going to be very brief because I know that I'm the only thing that's standing between you guys and the cookies in the back there. <laughs> uh, okay, he'll he'll wrap it up. But guys, support the little girls back there. They wanted to sell some African trinkets, and it's really whatever you want to give for them. Also, um, oh, they, we can't sell at the library, so they have a little sign-up sheet. And you just write your name and what you took, and I'll just put you on your honor to mail me some money um, or not. But support them and the books. That's the challenge. If you guys want to approach some of these foundations, take some books and send them out to the foundations and ask them to help, and maybe you'll get money back. And I'm going to say thank you all, and good night, and safe travels, and we love you all. 
I'll be, I'll be very brief. My name is Cameron Hess. I'm responsible for uh, acting as the liaison between the uh, uh, elementary school teachers that are in Zambia. I did uh, have the opportunity to go there and visit uh, in the spring of uh, 2022. Uh, when Peggy originally asked me to share some letters, she said, oh, maybe two or three. So I was looking through them and trying to figure out which ones to uh, read, and then I checked with her more recently and said, give me a time limit. How much time do you want me to take? And she said, one letter. <laughs> so I thought, how am I going to do that? There's, you know, there's, there's so many that are so great. So I decided to just read several and summarize them. But after those who have uh, already spoken, shared those, I think you've got a great flavor for what the letters are like. And, and so I'm just going to skip that. I'd like to share one thing with you before I sit down. I'd like to pay tribute to one of our teachers, Bright Masonda. I met him when I went to Zambia. This past July, he was hit and killed while riding a bicycle. Um, when I was in Zambia, I found out that vehicles have the right of way there, and they may or may not toot their horn to let you know, get out of the way because I'm not hitting the brake. So I don't know the personal circumstances about this, but this was one of our teachers who died about a month after he uh, wrote his last thank you letter to his sponsor. So they really do have a tough life over there. It's not unusual for some of them to pass away or their children, their parents. I would just like to say it's a privilege to be able to be associated with those of you who are so generous and kind and uh, support these great people in Zambia. Thank you. Thank you very much.